Kroger. Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. I'm back out on Elmer's with my good friend Alex. Right behind Alex is the pass. Look how rough this is. It's not super early in the morning, it's just after 8 a.m. See how rough it is going out of good ways, how far the waves are breaking out there. Look how dirty this water is. See how close this boat is to us. So where we're at right now is the about as far as the side-by-sides will take you. You'll see a white thing there. That's that's the limit, but you can fish past it. So we chose the end of this stretch of beach because we believe the water is deeper, closer to us. You see that boat right there. If we would have set up down there where you see the people, we would have had to go out really far. But since it's so rough this morning and kind of dirty, we are going to work on one thing. We're doing a catch and cook with whatever we can get with fish bites. Might be a taste test. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so we're gonna do this really simple. Here we got a jig head right here. Not a very big one, not a very small one. Here we got our fish bites. Alex wanted to borrow a big swivel. These are, <laughs> later on we'll show you those in another video. I got some already cut up here. We're going to put more than one piece. Normally people put a piece on. This is about the size here. You see that guys? Very small square piece. That is the easy flea right there. I think that's sand flea or that might be actually shrimp. That was given to me by Ray from Rig PFA. That might be the shrimp. I'm gonna put that on just like that. Now I got some new packs here. This is the easy crab. We're gonna do a smorgasbord here. You just need a small piece, but we're gonna give them a bit of a buffet. And we're gonna take our scissors out, cut a little piece. Stuff is tough coming out of the bag. It'll soften up in the water, but it'll last on the hook. A little piece like that. All right, now I have a brand new bag of easy shrimp here. It's a different color than the one I just used, so. Maybe it's sand flea, crab, and shrimp. Maybe that's what's up. We'll cut a little piece of that. Here you go, that's the size. So before I just start waiting out here to do this with the fish bites, right in front of me is actually a channel that is about three feet deep right now, running right here in front of us, and then it shallows up. There are fish running through this channel. It's right off the beach. We are gonna go ahead and just toss this out here for a second to see if we can pick up a croaker or a channel mullet or something like that i've heard in the past that fish bites doesn't catch catfish but i don't believe that that's true i believe i've seen people catch hard heads with this so this might be a hard head taste test this might be something else i have eaten channel mullet before which is a whiting same fish this was a long long time ago i don't remember what it tasted like i just know that it was not disgusting no bites there we're gonna come out a little further channel mullet commonly caught between the breakers even in this rough stuff it does take a while for the fish bites to soak to for it to work Reason why we're using, oh, shrimp are jumping right here. Wow. Reason why we're using fish bites opposed to like a piece of shrimp is because the crabs are thick in here and they'll take that shrimp right off the hook really fast. This will last a while and catch fish. Just throw right into the surf here, even though it's shallow. There are fish running through here. There we go, got him, oh no. That was the first bite. Do we have something here? Nope. We still have the bait though.
All right, guys, it seems that my settings on my camera changed out there as they do when I'm out there on the head strap. I'm gonna show you what I can, but it went into time warp. So yes, we have a gaff top now. It was our last piece left on the hook. It took a while, it is raining on us. That's Alex's crab in my chest. It happens sometimes, so this catch and cook is off to a good start. I have eaten gaff top before. I do like them. We are gonna try again, see if we can get something even stranger or just something I haven't had before or haven't had in a while. All right, this time we're gonna focus on the trench. Alex has been getting some shrimp out of it. It's right here. It's, it goes from like a foot to three feet and then shallows up real quick. It might be a four foot spot. It's running right through here. There are fish coming through it. Let's take a look at what Alex has done while we were out there doing that. Oh, they're popping out. Bring the champagne basket a little up higher, a little higher up. He's good. You got a few pounds already. Oh, definitely. This time it's just a single piece of easy shrimp. You throw that right out in the trench here. See if we can pick up something else other than a gaff top. I did get a lot of bites out there, mostly from crabs and probably little fish. It might be that having too many pieces on impedes setting the hook. One piece works, but the crabs will attack this. And the more they attack it, the faster I go through it. Excuse me while I get naked here real quick. Right now, what we want to do is make a concerted effort together to put shrimp in both our chests. We're going to fill two, two chests full of shrimp. We're going to leave a little room for some other things, too. Oh, that stuff is good. Keeps me running. So while I was out there working on one thing, this is what he got together. All right, let's catch you up to date with our shrimp. Here's what I got. I'm about, I'm about ready to cap it at that so I have room for other things. I'd like to get some crabs too. Fresh ice, it's actually the next day. I thought it would be really, really sore today, but I'm actually not really sore. I'm a little sore, but not like I was the last time I went down there. So, got fresh ice on them, got to deal with the shrimp, got to get the fish out, cut it, all that good stuff. Let's get it done, come on. Just gonna dump this in the sink. I wanna be super quick about this. First thing I wanna do is rinse this gaff top off and put it in this plastic bag here. Put that in the fridge. We're gonna cut that here real soon, but I wanna keep it cold. I got a lot of sorting to do. I got some mullet here that I wanted to use as bait. I'm not gonna rinse those off. So most of these shrimp I'm actually giving to the neighbor. Not all of them, but most of them. And this time I wasn't throwing back the bait shrimp. I'm keeping these bait shrimp, these really small ones here. Put, I'm gonna freeze those and fish with them later this year. Maybe even as late as winter when bait is short even though I'm giving these I'm gonna rinse these so we're sorting out the big shrimp here there's a lot <laughs> oh there's more bait there's all the big shrimp and right over here is all the bait shrimp so let's weigh that always less than you think when you're out there it's 10.32 pounds I thought I had 15 to 20 pounds but yeah definitely way off but a lot more than last time last time i brought home 6.4 pounds i believe so that is good before we process this fish we have to do a few things over here i've got this pan heating up not very hot put a bit of that olive oil spray in there and then we got to add our trilogy Using the frozen one this time, onion, celery, green, and red peppers. There's four things in there, but we still call that a trilogy.
a little bit. That looks good. I add some seasoning. This is the Chef Papa Don right here. Seafood magic. Not gonna get a lot of meat off this one gaff top, but enough for what I wanna do. Plus we're adding shrimp to this. Wow, look how white that meat is. I did not bleed this one. I usually bleed these when I put them in the chest, but I must have been preoccupied or busy. Even though, even though I didn't bleed it, that is still really white. Nice. There we go. Check it out. Two nice little fillets. That is plenty good for what we're doing. We are going to cut these two fillets up into chunks. There we go. Put that right into my pan. I also have a dozen shrimp from the same trip. Not cutting those up though, we're gonna put those in whole. Add a little more of the magic seafood. Reducing my heat just a little bit. I'm gonna saute the fish and the shrimp for a bit till things start to go white. As I stir this, or more like shuffle things around, I'm being very gentle. I don't want to break the gaff top up into little flaky pieces. It might happen, but if I'm careful, it's not gonna be super likely. All right, time for this. This is okra. Covering it at this point, and I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit. I'm only gonna let that simmer on a low heat for about 10 minutes because the okra is frozen. That'll give it time to thaw out. And then we're gonna add our final ingredient to that. Yes, looking good. Chef Papadon spice mixes tend to be very aromatic. The house smells really good. So the final ingredient is spaghetti sauce. This is basically succotash. There are succotashes that have different ingredients in them sometimes mostly usually stewed tomatoes though that's not today and corn lima beans that sort of thing okra and tomatoes are usually the base tomato would be the base okra would be the staple i suppose this is looking good most people might not even use spaghetti sauce but this is kind of a use what i have day the only thing i bought today was the okra and the trilogy because it's just convenient and easy to get frozen trilogy. And let that simmer till the rice is done. Looks like we got about three minutes, but we probably will let it sit for a little bit. We are done. We don't even have this on the heat and it's still simmering like that. The rice is done. I just got back from giving the neighbor shrimp. I only took a dozen out of the shrimp I got yesterday. So he got about 10 pounds. And whoa, super happy. Let me tell you. Here we go. Shrimp and gaff top succotash. Smells amazing. And yes, I've been tasting the spoons and spatulas. <laughs> It'll knock your socks off. Can you guys hear that? The lawnmower. The neighbor was so happy that I gave him 10 pounds of shrimp. He's out there cutting my grass. And that's how you get your grass cut in Louisiana. You give your neighbor shrimp. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Still have little chunks of Gaff top right there. We'll try that. Gaff top is actually a good eating fish. Next time 
I want to try a hard head taste test. Mm. Oh! Yeah! All right! Woo! Oh, that's good! Woo! Woo! I gotta get my composure back. Yeah! Woo! That's got some flavor. It's got some spice, some kick. Woo! Yeah, you're right. Oh! Woo. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.